remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Evil genius Travis Cook back with you once again and there's a certain question that I've been hearing a lot over the last few weeks it's a question that's been posed to me and I've seen other liberals pose it to to other conservatives a question that's come the way of those of us who are against Obamacare those of us who want Obamacare repealed or defunded or just eliminated by whatever means possible a certain question has been coming our way from the guy we talked to at the water cooler at work all the way up to Barack Obama and that is the question of if you repeal Obamacare what will you replace it with and in fact Barack Obama his own self even asked us this question just a few days ago you still think this law is a bad idea then you've got to tell us specifically what you would do differently to cut costs cover more people make insurance more secure well in response to Mr. Obama's question the question of if you repeal Obamacare what do you replace it with the correct answer to that question Mr. President is nothing zero zip nada goose egg we replace Obamacare with nothing now here's why I'm saying that there's something when that when that question is asked the question of if you repeal Obamacare what do you replace it with there's something very subtle in that question something a lot of people might not catch on to but it's actually a time-honored trick that liberals try to pull on conservatives that they've been doing doing for years when they ask that question the trick in that question is that liberals are trying to get Republicans and conservatives to engage in a discussion about how to better implement one of their asinine ideas differently now the problem with engaging in such brainstorming or such debate or such discussion is that by doing so you implicitly accept the flawed premise that the liberal is putting forth to begin with in other words you cannot have a discussion about how to better implement Obamacare or what you would replace Obamacare with unless you implicitly and tacitly accept the idea that, that something needs to be done by the government regarding health care to begin with and we don't believe that we don't believe that there's need for government intervention in the healthcare insurance industry or in healthcare in general. Now, this is clearly not the first time liberals have tried this. They've done this with practically every issue that's come down the pike. They did it with Social Security way back in the 40s and 50s. The discussion went from should we have Social Security or not to turning it around and getting Republicans to say, well, we could do Social Security, but let's do it better. Or let's, let's try and do it this way so it'll be around for future generations or whatever other garbage. To the point today that you could rarely, if ever, find a Republican office holder who actually has the balls to say, hey, wait, Social Security is bankrupting us. we got to get rid of the damn thing. You don't hear that anymore. The liberal trick worked. In fact, you could say that on any number of issues over the years, and it got to a point, it got to a point in the 2000s where the George W. Bush presidency could be seen as essentially a, a compassionate conservative presidency that really kicked this into overdrive, where they, the whole concept of the idea of the compassionate conservatism was, we'll do big government better than the liberals could. So, so much of it was accepting flawed ideas like Medicare and flawed ideas like federal funding of education. That's why uh, Bush spent more than anybody else did in education. Horrible flawed ideas that Bush and the Republicans embraced and we see the results so no we do not believe that you replace Obamacare with anything because we do not believe health care in America today is a problem some of you liberals are jumping up and down and screaming and practically having a heart attack at me saying that but you know something by your president's own numbers by your president's own facts and figures it shows that the problem is overblown if it exists at all by Obama's own numbers the so-called problem of uninsured people in America 
is statistically insignificant to start with. Obama, his own self, has said that 85% of Americans have insurance, only 15% don't. And before you doubt that number, before you say, ah, Travis, you're just some, you're 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 just some biased ideologue who has a political axe to grind with Obama, and so you doubt my numbers. Well, first of all, you're right. I am a biased ideologue who has a political axe to grind with Obama. I don't deny that. I'm kind of proud of it. But before you deny those numbers, here's a clip of Obama saying exactly what I just said. Here's Obama and his numbers of the uninsured. Now, of course, if you're one of the 85% of Americans who already have health insurance, you don't need to do a thing. For the 15% of Americans who don't have health insurance, this opportunity is life-changing. So there you heard it, right out of the horse's ass himself. I mean, the horse's mouth himself. Only 15% of Americans currently don't have insurance. 15%. That's it. That's all. So you mean to tell me that all of this anger, all of this fighting, all of this division, all of this snipping and snapping back and forth, all of these people losing coverage, all of these people whose full-time jobs are now part-time jobs, all of this happened because we wanted to appease a measly 15% of the American people? That is it? That's all? Now, it should go without asking, but I guess I have to ask it. Why on earth should the other 85% of us who have health insurance and who have access to the health care we need, that we need, why should we be forced by the government to put that health care at risk, to put our insurance at risk, to put our jobs at risk, to put the economy of this nation at risk, simply for a mere and insignificant 15% of the American people? Obama constantly says, that the status quo of healthcare in America is not working, but yet his own numbers would tell you the opposite. When he tells you that only 15% of the American people do not have insurance, that says to me the status quo is working pretty damn well. But let us not lose sight of the bigger point. I don't want to get sidetracked too much on this 15% number because I would, I would argue that even if the percentage of uninsured Americans were higher, if let's say 30% of Americans were uninsured, 40%, 50%, even if it were a majority of Americans who were uninsured, let's say 60 or 70%, even in those cases, it would still not be the government's job to intervene. Contrary to a somewhat popular belief, it is not the government's prerogative to make sure that our basic needs, however one wishes to define that term, it is not the government's prerogative to make sure that our basic needs are met. That's the responsibility of each of us individually. Make sure we and our families have what we need. Not the guy down the street, not the government, not the guy across town. Me, you, to do it on your own. When you look at it honestly, when you look at history, when you look at the 20th century in particular, the government's repeated attempts at this type of forced charity, at this type of trying to make sure that people have everything they need and extending that parameter and extending that parameter beyond just basic needs to, oh, education and, and opportunities and whatever, the, and birth control and whatever, whatever the, the subject of the day is. The government's repeated attempts at that are the reason that our nation is in the financial peril it is in today. There is no getting around that fact. We have talked on this show many times about how 60% of our budgets, CBO numbers talking here, 60% of our budgets are wrapped up in entitlement spending, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. You can't get past that number. That's what's got us in debt. That's what we're borrowing money to fund. And all of that is before Obamacare is even on the books. So we're already at the edge of a financial cliff, to use a term that's been popular recently. We already have government programs and entitlement spending that are choking us to death and bankrupting us. And on top of that, now we need to go into even further risk, further debt, 
for their financial peril to make sure 15% of the American people have health insurance. Are you people freaking high? I think that puts it all in perspective. So when someone asks you, what do you replace Obamacare with? You tell them, nothing. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next time.